Hey everybody, Nick with Frost CNC, and today we're going to tackle the Aventos HL lift mechanism from Bloom. You can see it's a pretty cool modern lift mechanism. Uh, you could also use it for an appliance garage type situation. And we're going to machine some holes to locate the mechanism in the side of the cabinet. We're also going to machine some holes in the back of the door to mount to the mechanism. Uh, if we flip over to Mosaic, you can see we've done that here in this wall cabinet holes to mount the mechanism, holes in the door. And what's cool about this is we made an option list to select the mechanism and it'll update the machining in the door to accommodate. So let's do it. All right, I'm gonna try and make this a shorter video today. Uh, but before we start, make sure you subscribe to this channel by pressing the subscribe button right below this video and give me a thumbs up uh, and make sure you're following our content. All right, so I'm going to start from scratch with a uh, wall single door cabinet, bring it into the room here. Uh, I'm going to change, make it wide and not very tall. There we go. We got our horizontal uh, slab look. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and edit. I'm going to get rid of these shelves inside. So a little cleaner inside for our uh, demonstration. And then I'm going to go to the face tab. And the first thing I want to do actually is I want to make sure that the door swing is shown right on my elevations uh, to show that it's a, a lift up uh, door. And so I'm going to do that by going ahead and going to hinge uh, top. And if I press OK, you can see now on my elevation uh, that that's shown correctly, which I do like. Uh, the problem with that is if I go ahead and look at the product. Now I've taken the back off already so we can see inside is you're actually going to see boring for the hinge mounting plate in the top of the cabinet, which obviously we don't want with uh, this mechanism. And so the way to get rid of that is actually to go to the face tab and go to the door. And we're going to do an override here. And we're going to override to something I made called no bore hinge. And so it's a hinge I made simply for this type of scenario where all of the machining for the mounting plate is taken away. So if I press OK now, you can see that machining is gone. And if I go back out, you can still see my door swing is shown on the elevation. So it's a great starting point. I'll quickly show you the no bore hinge here. If I go to libraries and hardware and I go find it here, you can see I just made it, called it no bore hinge and simply put zeros for all of the information there. Okay, now let's go ahead and place the HL mechanism. I'm gonna flip over here. Here is essentially the installation document for the HL. And the first thing we need to do is place this mechanism in the side of the cabinet. And you can see the diagram here on how to do that. Uh, we have two holes. You can see that they are at least five millimeters deep and five millimeters in diameter. And they're placed down from the uh, top of the cabinet opening and then back from the front by a given amount. And so this is a really good opportunity to use an insert uh, to do this type of machining. So I just need these two holes in the side of the cabinet. So let's pop over to Mosaic. And I'm gonna go ahead and make an insert by going to libraries and inserts. We'll go ahead and go to cabinet accessories, the folder that I wanna put this in, and we're gonna add an insert. Go ahead and call this Aventos HL, okay. Now this insert is going to be just simply operations. So I'm gonna click operations there and I'm gonna go ahead and press add. Okay, so the operations we need are to bore holes and we are doing it in both the left and right side of the cabinet. But the reference point for these holes, I want to be the top of the opening. So if I, again, if I go back here, we can see that our holes need to be 88 millimeters down from the uh, top of the opening. So we'll reference the top. I'll switch over to millimeters here and we will go ahead and type in 88. Now from the front of the cabinet, if we go back, 
we need to be 37 in for the first hole. Let's go ahead and do that. And as I mentioned previously, we need a five millimeter hole and at least five deep. So we'll just go ahead and make it deep enough uh, with a seven there. So there we go. We've got the first hole in both the left and right side of the cabinet once we use this insert. And we're gonna go ahead and add another one for the back hole. So left and right side, we're referencing the top. That same 88 millimeters down. Now from the front of the cabinet for this one, if we flip back over, it's 192 plus 37, so 229. And again, we need a five millimeter hole and a depth of seven millimeters and we'll press okay. So there we go. That's a very basic insert, but a really good uh, kind of first insert if you're just getting into them. Let's go ahead and press okay. And let's go ahead and put that in the cabinet and get our mechanism placed. I'm gonna go to edit. Go ahead and go to view product so we can see what we're doing here. All right, so there's the inside of the cabinet. I'm gonna flip over to interior and you can see down here we have an inserts button. I go to cabinet accessories. There's the Eventos HL I just made. And I'm gonna just drag that in. And look at that. There's our machining in the sides of the cabinet, referencing the top of the cabinet and 37 back and 229 back. So with that insert now, we've placed our HL mechanism. And you can use this insert now in, in any cabinet you want uh, an HL. Pretty cool. Uh, one more thing to show here before we move on to the machining in the door is this actually works even if you have a shelf in here. So I'll go ahead and split this and you can see an adjustable shelf and it got rid of our uh, Eventos HL insert. I can go ahead and bring that into this top opening and our machining is there as well. All right, so this really works in, in many scenarios. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the shelf. Put our insert in. And let's get on to the machining of the door. I'm gonna press okay. In order to do that, I'm actually gonna make a few parameters. We're gonna to go to settings. I'm gonna to go to edit. And you can see I've got three parameters here that are already made. Let's talk about the first two. It says SFA right and SFA left. And what this is is the overlay of this door on the right side of the cabinet and the left side of the cabinet. And so if I go back to the directions here and go down, you can see it talks about the machining of the door here. And really what we need is a series of four holes. Well, those holes get placed in from the edge of the door relative to the overlay. So SFA is the overlay of the cabinet. You can see that up here. However far the door overlays the end, they call SFA and that gets factored into how the holes get placed from the edge of the door. So if I flip back over, that makes sense of SFA uh, right and SFA left. Now the third one is another cool thing to do in Mosaic and that is to make an option list. So if I go to this parameter and I go to edit, you can see I made this parameter as an option list instead of a number or yes, no, or quantity. And what's cool about that is it allows me to select one of the four possible HL mechanisms. So if I go back to this document again, you can see we've got four options for the arm of the uh, uh, HL, and it's based on the height and uh, weight of the door or the power factor. And so what I want is my machining in the door to change as I select one of these four mechanisms. Right, because you can see that essentially the distance down from the top of the door changes as you change mechanism. And so I made this option list simply by adding and typing in the mechanism number for all four of them. And now I'm gonna show you how I put that into the machining on the door. I press okay here and okay. Now I've just got slab door selected for the wall door so all I did was I went to library's doors, I found the slab door and I edited it and called it Aventos HL and I'll show you what I put on that door. I go ahead and click here 
and go to edit. We'll go to operations and I will flip the part. And there's the four hole pattern needed for uh, mounting uh, the door to the HL mechanism. I click on one of these holes, you can see my formulas. So this is in the X direction and we're doing this down from the top of the door, just like the directions say. And you can see this is where I put my options in. If HLM equals one, which is the first mechanism in the option list, you can see it gets placed by part L minus the overlay at the top of the cabinet, minus 153. Let's go back. And you can see that's exactly what's written right here. Top of the door, minus the overlay of the cabinet, minus 153 for the first mechanism. Now you can see 203, 253, 303. And there they are, 203, 253, 303. And so now as I select one of these four mechanisms, this uh, hole is gonna move up and down on the door relative to the mechanism choice. And you can see all of them have that same option list being called for. Now in the Y direction, you can see I'm calling our SFA parameters that we made plus the additional 12 and a half millimeters uh, that the directions call for right here. So really just recreated exactly what you see here uh, on this uh, installation instructions and created that in a uh, door in the uh, door library. So let's go ahead and put this in the job. I'm gonna press okay and press okay. Now I'm not gonna change it here because in a full job, there's likely doors that you don't want to be HL doors and just a normal slab door. And so we're going to change it right at the cabinet and go back in and go to edit. And on the face tab, I'm going to go ahead and override this door to the door that we just made. Or sorry, the door that we just looked at. There it is. Slab door Ventos HL. Press OK and OK. Now let's go take a look. There it is. You can see we've got the mechanism in and now the machining in the back of the door for mounting the HL. Now let's go ahead and take a peek at how the option list works. Let's go to parameters, select the product parameters, and we'll bring all three in. And we'll show the first two, the overlay. Basically, we're going to have to follow the overlay uh, that we know um, from just looking at the reveals on our cabinet. So in this particular cabinet, uh, if I've got an eighth reveal here, I would type in five eighths if this is a uh, three quarter side. Don't worry if you have undersized uh, plywood or undersized melamine. Uh, there's a little bit of play in these mechanisms, so this will work. And you can see that we'll bump these just a little bit. I'll show you an extreme version and you can see how it clearly moves our mechanism uh, in. Okay, now here's the cool part is the option list. So right now it's set to this particular mechanism. As I flip between them, look at that. You can see the whole uh, set of four holes move down. And now based on the power factor, uh, you can determine which of four mechanisms you need and quickly change your machining to accommodate. All right. Now, I'm just going to give you one thing to watch out for uh, when you're doing this. Is if you have to adjust the overlay here, um, or sorry, the reveal at the top of this cabinet, you're going to have to do it with a parameter. If you go to the face tab, and we go to and try and adjust the reveal at the top. What you're gonna see is that the machining moves down with the adjustment. So we'll make a drastic one here. Go to three inches off the top. And it moves down with the door. And the mechanism no longer works, right? Every, what that's gonna do is essentially get you three inches at the bottom, right? Because the door is actually gonna sit up here when really you intended uh, for that not to happen. And so really it's a cautionary tale to not use this adjust button unless you absolutely have to. The way we're actually gonna do that 
is simply with a parameter. So there's a parameter that is controlling your reveal at the top of a wall cabinet up here in the doors category. Let's go ahead and find that right there. And that is the appropriate way to change the reveal on this cabinet if you need to. You can see now, if I change this to a dramatic number here, the machining will not move relative to the interior of the cabinet. And that is what you want for the mechanism to actually function properly. So again, I would stay away from adjusting the face if you can, because uh, really that's going to throw off your machining. There it is, a working HL mechanism in Mosaic. We'll see you at the next video.